Hello students, welcome to Learner's Planet, Theory Session 11 of Carbon and its Compounds. So, till now we have discussed about the carbon, what is carbon, what are the properties of carbon, where it is present in the periodic table, what type of compounds it is forming, what is the property of those compounds and what type of reaction it undergoes are important compounds like ethanol and acids. Now in this session we will discuss about soaps and detergents. These are also very important carbon compounds which we are using in our daily life. Now let's see what are soaps actually. We are using, you must have seen your uh, mother using the soaps and detergents and it is used in houses. So let's see what are soaps and detergents. So what is a soap? Any substance, soap is what? Any substance which has cleansing action in water is called detergent. Now first of all we will categorize a, a substance as a detergent. Now these detergents are what? These are further categorized into soapy or non-soapy detergents. So any substance which has cleansing action in water is called a detergent. Now what is a soap? A soap is the sodium or potassium salt of long chain carboxylic acid that is what? Fatty acid which has a cleansing property in water. So this sentence might be confusing you. It's nothing. It's sodium salt of long chain carboxylic acid. You know what is a carboxylic acid? It has got a carbon chain to which COOH group is attached. So that is its sodium salt. Now let's see its structure. A soap has a large non-ionic hydrocarbon group and an ionic group. What is the ionic group here? COO- and Na+. To just show you, I'll draw here. See there is a long hydrocarbon chain that is if I am drawing the chain like this CH3, CH2, CH2, CH2 and there is COONA. So this is what? This is metal. The sodium salt of long chain carboxylic acid is what? Soap. So let's take some examples of soaps. These are sodium stearate and sodium palmitate. These are the most commonly used soaps. So what is a sodium stearate? Sodium stearate is the sodium salt of long chain saturated fatty acid called steric acid. Now you must be aware of what is saturated and what is unsaturated. Saturated fatty acid meaning the carbon chain has single bond between them, between the carbon atoms. Now this is the sodium salt of, this is what, this is steric acid, CN, H2N plus 1, COOH, right? Likewise, and what would be its soap, sodium stearate, sodium stearate, the formula would be, I'll note down here what is the formula of sodium stearate. Sodium stearate, it is what? C17 H35 COONA is sodium stearate. Now, there is another soap that is sodium palmitate. Sodium palmitate is the sodium salt of long chain saturated fatty acid called palmitic acid. What is the formula of palmitic acid? C15, H31 and COOH. Now let's, I'll write this formula of the sodium palmitate. Sodium palmitate, P A L M I T A T. Now, what is the formula of sodium palmitate? It would be C15 
एच थर्टी वन सी ओ ओ एन ए दिस इज वॉट सोडियम पामिकेट नाउ द सोप इज वॉट सोप इज द सॉल्ट ऑफ स्ट्रॉन्ग बेस दैट इज सोडियम हाइड्रोक्साइड एंड अ वीक एसिड दैट इज वॉट कार्बोक्सिलिक एसिड सो a solution of soap in water is basic in nature so if i have to form sodium stearate what will be the reaction here it will be stearic acid c17 h35 cooh plus of sodium hydroxide naoh and it will give what it will give us sodium stearate that is c17 h35 coona so this is a salt of what it is a salt of strong base that is sodium hydroxide and a weak acid that is a carboxylic acid so when i'll dissolve it in water what all will be the ions formed the ions formed would be c17 h35 coo minus plus of na plus now these will again react with water and will form what acid and the base so the sodium ion will react with oh minus ions and will give you what naoh so which is a stronger base students see which is a stronger one students it is sodium hydroxide so what will be its solution it would be basic in nature and what bases do they turn lead red litmus paper blue now how is soap is manufactured how is soap manufactured let's see how it is manufactured so soap is made from animal fat or vegetable oil fats and vegetable oils are naturally occurring esters of higher fatty acids so these are naturally occurring esters of higher fatty acids and alcohol called glycerol so our fats and vegetable oils are what these are the esters i told you in my previous session that when an acid combines with an alcohol what is the product formed it is an ester so fats and oils are the esters of what fatty acid and alcohol called as glycerol so these are the esters of it when fats and oils are heated with sodium hydroxide solution or it can be simple sodium hydroxide they split into sodium salt of higher fatty acid and glycerol i told you that when your ester is heated with sodium hydroxide it splits to give an acid and an alcohol in the previous session i discussed it i hope you remember it the process of making soap by the hydrolysis of fats or oils with alkali is called as saponification do remember this saponification so remember saponification that is the process of making soap by the hydrolysis of fats or oil in the presence of an alkali now let's see how your soap cleanses a soap molecule has a tadpole shaped structure whose ends have different polarities 
I hope you understood how soap is manufactured. It is just that fats and oil are heated with sodium hydroxide. Nowadays, uh, these hydrocarbons, long chain hydrocarbons from petrol, are also used for preparing soaps. Now, the soap has got two ends. This is a short ionic water soluble part and a long hydrocarbon chain. So, in soap molecule, so isn't it looking like a tadpole? Now, in a soap molecule, at one end is the long hydrocarbon chain that is non-polar and hydrophobic. What do you mean by hydrophobic? Insoluble in water, but soluble in oil. Whereas, at the other end is the short polar carboxylate ion which is hydrophilic that is soluble in water but insoluble in grease and oil so which is your hydrophobic part this is your hydrophobic part this is insoluble in water and which is your ionic or the hydrophilic part this is hydrophilic part that is it is soluble in water now let's see how actually it removes the dirt now what happens this is the soap if I'll write the chemical structure it is C17H35COONA this is the hydrophobic this is the hydrophilic and the non-polar part is towards the dirt and the polar part is away from the dirt now when soap is shaken with water it becomes a soap solution that is colloidal in nature now here students this colloidal is a new term for you colloidal solution means in this the particles they remain in the solution form and they are visible they are not visible to the naked eye but they are visible under microscope in solutions the particles are not visible under microscope also but in colloidal solution they are visible under microscopes their size is between 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power 5 picometers I suppose and uh, this is 10 to the power minus 3 to 10 to the power minus 5 and this you can easily observe in the microscopes they are visible there so that is the colloidal solution now in this your soap solution becomes what? colloidal agitating the solution concentrates soap on the surface and causes foaming you must have observed this when you agitate the soap solution what happens that you get lots of foam on the surface so let's see how it cleanses a number of soap molecules surround or encircle dirt and grease in a clustered structure called micelles which encircles such particles and emulsifies them. Micelle is again a new term for you. What happens is that you can see these are soap molecules. So this circle one is the polar end, the zigzag path is the non-polar path. Now what is happening, these are forming the circle and this circle is called as mycelae. Now let's see how it acts, say this is your grease or dirt, this is acted upon by soap. So there are hydrophilic as well as hydrophobic ends. Now what happens here is that these, this dirt particle it comes in the center, say the center of this, this particle, this particular portion. What is this? This is your dirt or grease 
Now this is your dirt. So what are these soap particles actually doing? They are encircling the dirt particle and are forming a micelle. Now let's see how it cleanses. In a soap micelle, the soap molecules are arranged radially with a hydrocarbon end directed towards the center and the ionic end directed towards outside. As we saw there, I'll also draw it here. I'll also draw it here. So this is your micelle. Now there are the polar ends are the edges. That is your COO NA part is at the edges. And to this what are attached is the hydrocarbon chains. Now this is forming the micelle. Now what is written there? That the hydrocarbon ends are directed towards inside. And your polar ends are directed outside. And in between they encircle what? They encircle the dirt or the grease. So this is your micelle. What is happening in this? What is written here? The molecules are arranged radially with hydrocarbon ends directed towards the center. These are the hydrocarbon ends. And the ionic end directed outwards. These are the ionic ends. That is, this has COO and A or CO minus, this would be CO minus, this dissociates, CO minus. So these are what? These are the hydrophilic ends. This is the micelle. When dirty clothes are put in water containing dissolved soap, then the hydrocarbon ends of the soap molecule in the micelle attach to the oil or grease particles present on the surface of the dirty cloth. Now when the dirty cloth is agitated with soap water, oily and greasy particles present in it are entrapped by micelles and get dispersed in water due to which the soapy water becomes dirty. Now this is another example is given here. This is water, this is the ionic or the polar end, these are the hydrocarbon chains and at the center is the dirt particle. Now this hydrocarbon chains or soap has entangled dirt at the center. Now when these clothes are agitated, what happens? That these micelles, including the dirt, moves into the soapy water. So because of that, you must have observed that the soapy water becomes dirty after some time. The micelles stay in solution as colloid. Colloid means the particle size ranges between the true solution and the suspension. Suspension, you must have seen, if you will put sand in water or, yeah, if you are putting sand in water, what happens? That your sand suspends at the bottom. So that is called as suspension. True solution, when you dissolve sugar in water, you can't see sugar particles, even with the microscope. And it can be easily filtered. But the colloidal solution, the particle size is in between true solution and the suspension. So these cannot be filtered. These cannot pass through your uh, plasma membrane or filters with very minute pore size. So your solution is a colloidal solution. Like when you dissolve mud in water, small amount of mud in water, the 
solution becomes turbid you cannot see the particles from the naked eye but you can observe it when you see it in a microscope or these particles can be separated when they are filtered now the micelle stay in solution as colloid and will not come together to precipitate because of iron iron repulsion why there is iron iron repulsion see your this is your one of the micelle and this is your another micelle now what is happening here these all have coo minus ions here also there is coo minus now what will happen there will be a force of repulsion between them so they will not suspend that is they will not settle or precipitate thus the dirt suspended in micelles is easily rinsed away the soap micelles are larger enough to scatter light they can scatter light hence a soap solution appears cloudy the subsequent mechanical action of rubbing or tumbling this lodges the dirt and grease from the fabric these get detached and are washed away with excess of water leaving the fabric clean so they are they can be easily washed away this is how the soap soap cleanses dirt now we are using soap but there are certain limitations of soap also the limitations like soaps do not form much lather or foam in hard water hard water like there are water which have got there are water in which there are dissolved salts of calcium or magnesium so soaps do not form lather with them what else they do the calcium magnesium or iron ions of hard water form an insoluble sticky gray colored precipitate called scum so why the water is hard because of the presence of calcium magnesium and iron ions now those they react with the soap and they form a precipitate called as scum which restricts the cleansing action of soap and makes washing more difficult the scum form also hardens and discolors or decolorizes the fabric so what it causes the decoloration of the fabric and also it hardens the fabric decolorizes the fabric so you must have seen when fabric is washed with hard water what happens there its color becomes faded sorry children decolorizes the fabric now ordinary soaps are not suited for fabrics such as silks wool you must have seen silks are sent for dry cleaning wool is washed with easy or something else because the alkalis in the soap injure the fiber if the water is slightly acidic in nature soaps can not be used for cleaning purpose when water is acidic soaps can't be used the acid media changes soaps into carboxylic acid and the action of soap becomes ineffective so what happens the acid present will change soap into carboxylic acid to overcome these drawbacks 
new types of chemical based cleansing agents are developed or they were developed these are called synthetic detergents or simply detergents now let's see the differences between soaps and detergents what are the actual differences soaps these are what these are methyl salts of long chain higher fatty acids whereas detergents these are sodium salts of long chain hydrocarbons like alkyl sulfates or alkyl benzene sulfonates these are fatty acids i'll tell you these are soaps are the long chain fatty acids that is its general formula would be r its general formula would be r c o o n a r c o o n a and this side the general formula would be these are alkyl sulfates so alkyl sulfate is r s o 4 okay or alkyl benzene sulfonate that is c h 3 H S O four will be your alkyl sulfate or alkyl benzene sulfonate. So these are the sodium salts of alkyl sulfonates, sulfates or sulfonates. So there is a difference. Soaps. These are prepared from vegetable oils and animal fats, whereas detergents. These are prepared. from hydrocarbons of petroleum or coal soaps they cannot be used effectively in hard water as they produce scum what is scum this is the insoluble substance or the precipitate which is formed by the action of soap on calcium magnesium or iron here they do not produce insoluble precipitates in hard water they are effective in soft hard or salt water also they cannot be used in acid solutions or in acidic water these can be used in acidic solutions their cleansing action is not as strong as that of detergents whereas their cleansing action is by surfactants which is a strong cleansing which has a strong cleansing action now what are surfactants surfactants are the very small molecules which adsorb to the dirt or the dust particle now they are biodegradable and some of the detergents are not biodegradable what do you mean by biodegradable that is they can be degraded by microorganisms but detergents can not one reason behind is that in detergents unsaturated carbon chain is present that is a carbon chain with a double bond is present whereas in soap the saturated chain is there that is a carbon chain where single bonds is present if a straight chain hydrocarbon is used in the detergent instead of a branched chain hydrocarbon then the detergent becomes what biodegradable thus the major disadvantage of detergents can be overcome so this is all about your soaps and detergents so now we have completed our theory session of carbon and its compound i hope you have enjoyed this and also understood the basic concepts of organic chemistry this is a very very important topic now in our next session we will be dealing with the questions related to the theory session so that your concepts are clear more and more 
So I am here trying to con clear your concepts related to the carbon compounds. I hope now you can name hydrocarbons, now you can tell the properties of alcohols or the acids and also about the cleansing action of soaps and the detergents. So thank you students for listening patiently.